Okay, so it's 704, I'll call the meeting to order and I'm joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mrs. Gonzalez, Mr. Walner, Mr. Studo, and we are also being, uh, we're live on air. Uh, Mr. Healy has let us know we're live on air with NORCAM and we'll begin with the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, the republic for which, for which it, stands, it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty justice, justice for all. For all. Now, a, little, uh, a little bit different tonight. I'd ask my colleagues and attendees to join me to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the passing of uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was, we all know, as a legal crusader who served for years on the U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals on the, for D.C. and before being appointed to the su Supreme Court, for which she's been in service since 1993. And we'll, we all will know her. She'll be as equally remembered and regarded for her legacy as a gender and equality and disability rights champion as she will be for her decades of service as an esteemed jurist jurist for our country. So if you please join me just for a, a brief moment of silence in her honor and to commemorate her passing. Thank you. We have our first Order of business is a COVID-19 update. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a quick update. Um, some of you have seen that the uh, state has been issuing weekly maps uh, with color-coded gray um, and then uh, green, yellow, red. Um, we in North Reading had been into the green. Um, and then last Wednesday evening when the map came out, the data indicated that we were back into the gray, the sort of off the map um, place, which was certainly encouraging, particularly on the um, on the, the eve of the opening day for North Reading Public Schools. Um, and so I, I do want to uh, recognize the effort on the part of the superintendent of schools, Patrick Daly, his administrative team, um, our public safety officials, the school committee, and uh, really all the personnel, including the teachers of the North Reading Public Schools, to be able to um, open the doors on Thursday morning. And, um, you know, it was great to see that the buildings were open, I think, for our whole community, honestly, um, to be able to see that um, here. Um, you know, we're, we've had some conversations, uh, particularly between the health director and the superintendent of schools, regarding how we'll monitor things. Um, and, and that'll be something that will be ongoing um, and something that, you know, we'll look at the data on a regular basis. You know, we'll certainly look at the indicators from the state and make sure we are, you know, aligned in terms of our understanding of what's driving those numbers. Um, we've seen in some other areas that in, in smaller communities, um, smaller numbers can really, you know, change the classification and you need to really delve into the numbers. And I think that there's a commitment to do that um, here so that we are, um, we know exactly what's going on in the community. And as you can imagine, the you know the public health nurse and the folks in the health department, they're tracking the data through the state's system on a regular basis. So they are seeing the cases on a sort of individual basis, but there is data that we're not directly privy to that is calculated into the uh, designation of the uh, gray, uh, green, yellow, red classification. Um, that really was all in terms of the updates um, for me this evening on uh, COVID-19. Um, there's some related items later on the agenda that I know we'll be discussing. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Gilberto? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next order of business, which is an agreement with the North Reading Historical and Antiquarian Society and vote to authorize the town administrator to sign the amendment. Mr. Gilberto, you're muted. You're on. <laughs> We missed that whole first part. You're Thank judge. you, Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> You've got the controls. You're the man with the controls, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mute myself. 
Madam Chair, through you, as the board members are aware, the uh, the select board has been discussing um, since uh, the spring um, a warrant article, which is on the warrant for the October town meeting to establish um, um, an appropriation of funds for the um, repair and maintenance of the historical buildings located at 27 Bow Street, um, the uh, um, Putnam House property, if you will. And um, as I have mentioned before, the town has a long-term agreement um, in the form, uh, a long-term agreement with the Historical and Antiquarian Society where they um, are um, maintaining the property with exclusive control over it, as well as the house, grounds, barn, schoolhouse, and additional buildings that have been added since the agreement was signed some 31 years ago. Um, just as a matter of record, the mem some members of this board are aware, and I included the meeting packet, that um, I am a member of the Historical and Antiquarian Society by virtue of donations I have made to them. I am not an officer of the Historical and Antiquarian Society, nor do I have a financial interest in their, um, in their business. But in the interest of full disclosure, I just put that out there. Um, so roughly a few months before I arrived here in town, the agreement with the Historical and Antiquarian Society, which was a 25 year agreement, um, was automatically extended for another, I believe, 25 year term. And that agreement is in your meeting packet. There is one section in that agreement. If you're looking in your meeting packet, it is on page 74, um, where it refers to the um, society having exclusive control over and ment maintaining at its own expense, the house, grounds, barn, and schoolhouse to keep them in reasonable repair. Uh, it's my belief that that language will need to be modified in conjunction with the Historical and Antiquarian Society, just to make it clear that if the town is going to appropriate funding, that uh, the burden is not solely on the Historical and Antiquarian Society. Um, the form of, the, of that amendment is something that I think will need to be um, resolved in detail with the Historical Society and has not been done so yet, uh, but I, I don't foresee that it will be a challenge. Um, I know um, Mrs. Gonzalez and Mr. O'Leary and I had talked with some members of the, of the uh, Minute and Militia regarding their work and their concern over the long-term preservation of the buildings on that property the militia has really been involved in the buildings and the maintenance of the buildings and in some cases even construction of the buildings but the historical society is sort of the underlying authority under the license that we have um and i, I know i have heard that the historical society is you know has some a few concerns about you know does this mean that the historical society would not be involved in the decision making for any improvements or repairs to the buildings i do not believe that was the intent of the minute and militia when they approached us back in i think january at this point um, so I'm confident that this can be resolved, but I, I feel, um, you know, that where it is, um, it's not an interest in the property, but it's uh, certainly authority over the property that I, I would like the select board to consider voting to authorize me to um, uh, resolve that matter with them at the appropriate time. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I just had a quick one too, with regard to the other portion of the agreement allows them the use and occupancy of which it seemed like that was a um, quid pro quo, not in a negative way that the term has become, but you know, we're allowing you to use it in exchange for you to manage and maintain it and keep it in good, good order. Correct. Is that condition modified at this point? Has not been, and I don't expect that it would be, Madam Chair. Um, okay. they, they are really our eyes and ears on that property, and um, they're an important partner for the town and have been for a number of years. Um, you know, there have been a couple of instances where their limited resources have really not been able to address some life safety issues. And some board members are aware we've been called in to help and we have helped um, in those instances. Uh, but no, I, I, that, I, I don't foresee that they would want to change that and I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh -huh. um, at this stage, I, I really just, I don't want to have an agreement out there that the town is doing something that's inconsistent with it. I think that we should resolve it. And I think it can be resolved. Okay. And also that, you know, the, the potential use of funding to maybe upgrade or renovate where it's public property would have to comply with the fiscal policies of, you know, um, whatever, you know, the value of that work is or present codes and things like that. So I think that might be something else you could work into that as you modify it. The, the, way, it's, the way it's proposed on the warrant the appropriation would be general fund dollars that would be appropriated 
um, and would need to in their form, you know, in that form be expended under the state's um, you know, public bidding laws, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure whether that's um, helpful or not <laughs> to, to everybody in the process, but that's what's uh, that's what would, would need to occur based on this um, um, the setup. I don't know that that same restriction would apply to any gift funds that would be donated if the board does vote to um, authorize that. But you know, clearly we're, we're considering a substantial amount of seed money, if you will, with that ten thousand dollars we're talking about. It's not that's not a small amount. Okay. Questions, um, Mr. O'Leary. I see your hand up. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, I, I think it's important. I mean, when we were approached uh, by members of the Minute Militia who are also associated with the Historical and Antiquarian Society, you know, the concern is, is that, you know, the, the people who have been involved for the last 30 plus years or more, um, the, the numbers are dwindling. Uh, these individuals have committed and uh, given a significant amount of uh, human and, and dollar resources, you know, to uh, expand and maintain these, uh, these facilities in the spirit of the uh, the original agreement. But it's gotten to the point where, you know, they, they need some financial assistance to do so. I don't think that the town, town government per se, should be um, usurping the, the spirit of the of the original agreement because it's been working very well. And I'm quite confident that, uh, you know, as in the past and with the present members and with future members of the historical antiquarian society, they're gonna do what's in the best interest of, uh, of the property in the town as a whole and uh, retaining the historical nature of, uh, of, the, of the property itself. So I, I think, you know, what we're doing here is we're just looking to supplement them um, from a dollars and cents standpoint, not to you. And I don't think we should be usurping any of their, their authority or their say in their, uh, in their oversight of the property at all. I just think, you know, it's a, it's a resource and an asset that needs to be maintained. And I think it's a, a long time coming where, you know, we should, uh, have the ability to provide them with that assistance when it's needed. And again, they're not looking to do it on a, on a regular basis. They're just looking at this as a, uh, as a fail safe measure to ensure that they can maintain the property going forward. So, you know, I, I just think this, the spirit and the, uh, of the original agreement should be maintained. I think, you know, we should take a, a hands off attitude and should be looking to usurp any of the current authority that they have right now because they're doing a, a terrific job, have done a terrific job, and I'm sure we'll continue to do a terrific job going forward. But it's not a lot of money. Like you say, it's not ins insignificant, 10000 You know, To me, I think the seed money should actually be a little bit more so that the interest can, that can be generated can be used on ongoing maintenance uh, ability, but that will come with probably with the gift account. Um, but again, I just think that in the agreement, I, I think it uh, we should authorize the town administrator to ensure that the original intent of the agreement uh, be maintained as much as possible. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Anyone else? Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah, um, I will echo Mr. O'Leary. Um, and, and just to add that if, if anybody doesn't know, these men have Put their, I mean, they've saved money, so much money in the past. They've put their own time, effort, money into preserving these buildings and um, their gems. I mean, they, they, they need to be taken care of and that's their concern. You know, they don't want them, they don't want them to be forgotten about. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. Studo, any, we all set? Mr. Walner? Yeah, I'm, I'm all in support of what they're doing. I think it's great and I think the town owes them credit for doing it and putting doing the work. So $10,000 is a small price to pay. Okay, thank you. And is there a motion, Mr. Studo? Mm -hmm. oh. You're muted. I'm muted. <laughs> we'll Madam figure Chair. this out. Madam Chair, I move to authorize the town administrator to sign an amendment to the agreement between the town of North Reading and the North Reading Historical Integrin Society, modifying the society's responsibilities for maintenance of the buildings of the Putnam House grounds. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Emmanuel Pelli is I. All right, our next order of business is 
the gift account for repairs, maintenance, and improvements to buildings located on grounds of the Reverend Daniel Putnam House. And this is similar in line to the same discussion. And this is a separate account for funds that might be gifted by private parties or private funding sources that we would we have to vote to accept. Mr. Gilberto, anything else? No, nope, that was perfect. This is a companion to the appropriation that we've been talking about. Um, the select board has the authority under state law to vote to establish that account. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Gilberto? Seeing none, do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to establish a gift account for repairs, maintenance, and improvements to buildings located on the grounds of the Reverend Daniel Putnam House. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manupelli is I. Okay, so as soon as that's set up, Mr. Gilberto, you'll provide the information so people can start donating funds to that? That's correct. <laughs> All right. Okay, next order of business is discuss the October town meeting, vote to vote remaining recommendations, review the warrant article assignments. This is in anticipation of our 8 p.m. virtual meeting. All right, Mr. Gilberto, you wanna take that away for us? I will, Madam Chair, thank you. I should just note that um, we've gone through as we have in the past and highlighted our recommendation for the vote. However, as we've seen from previous discussions where an article is identified as recommend at town meeting, where you've already taken that vote, you do not need to re-vote it. So we just have put it there in case there's a board member that or others who wish to propose different action. So for example, article two prior year bills at this, as of today, I have not heard of any prior year bills that were building uh, that were pending, but we do keep that as an open item going into the, uh, as close to town meeting as we can, um, as we can carry it in case anything comes up. And then we ask the board to vote to recommend, which we expect would be a recommendation to pass over at the town meeting. Um, Madam Chair, um, uh, you know, town meeting is a week from Saturday. I don't know if it would be in our interest to consider identifying a, a date for a short meeting late the week of town meeting just to take any final actions that might be required so we don't need to convene on the floor um, or on the field at town meeting. Um, I don't know whether that's going to be a possibility or not based on board member availability because it is only two weeks away. Uh, but I'm thinking that we did that for the June town meeting and it seemed to work well where the afternoon of the meeting, we actually took any remaining votes that were required. Um, this would be one that is likely to be remaining as is a potential budget amendment item. Um, the other thing we could do is just kind of handle it on the floor town meeting, post a meeting to vote it um, that morning and report the recommendations um, you know, on the floor of town meeting if need be. It's whatever okay. the board's pleasure is. Uh, and what time is the town meeting? 11 o'clock. And we had anticipated the board meeting prior to that at 10 a.m. on Saturday, right? Um, it it could be at 10 a.m. Um, it will be a, a bit of a challenge for me only because I'll be on the field preparing. Um, we could meet could meet at, at any time or we could meet at, you know, in person only 15 minutes before the meeting on the field if, if need be. Okay. And post a meeting for that purpose. All right. Any any um, opinion one way or the other, Mr. O'Leary? I just think it, I don't know that there's going to be much pending. Uh, so you know, maybe you know, 15 minutes before, just convene on the field or or in the school if that's the case. But, uh, all right, Mr. Waller, any any issue with that? Yeah, I was just wondering too how much is still to be decided. Um, I didn't think we had hardly anything actually. It won't be much. Okay. Right. And it, and, and I Ahead of the meeting, work for you that morning. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. All right, Mrs. Gonzalez, does that work for you? That works. Mr. Studo, all things aligned, does that work for you? Yes. All right. Okay, so we'll just post the meeting for. Um, the morning of, and I guess you're going to, you're going to choose the time depending on how much business we have remaining at that point. Okay. I will. I'll consult with you, Madam Chair. All right. Mr. Okay, so I'll take Gilberto. us through the articles if you'd like. 
I, I just want to ask you, is I can you tell us what page it is in the packet? Certainly. So I'm going off of motions that begin on um, page six of the packet. Oh, okay. I see that, but did 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 you put the warrant? I know you I got the it warrant, the but I put the list. The, so the list is a little further along. Let me see if I can. Yeah. What page is that on? I, I know. know I, I can seventy-nine. Okay. Seventy-nine. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth, back and forth to the beginning. And I had my warrant, I meant to bring it with me to sit down and it's downstairs on the counter. I got mine in the mail today, so. Um, all right, so we're, we're going with uh, review of these articles and you've got the, we have articles one through 16 listed, but motion specific to certain of these that we haven't already recommended. So article one, Mr. Gilbert, if we could just go really quickly through this, we already recommended that. Correct. Article two prior year bills, I think was at town meeting because you weren't sure, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. And we don't have any new information tonight. So I don't recommend a vote on it this evening. So that'll be something that we would handle on the uh, article two will be something we handle that morning pr prior to town meeting. Yes. Article three, we voted to recommend this. Am I wrong in that? <clears throat> we recommended it. Sorry. Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. And um, Article 4, appropriate money to the stabilization fund. Madam Chair, we're recommending that the board vote to recommend passing over that article. And the reason is only that uh, we're looking to maintain the town's um, flexibility and liquidity heading into the June town meeting. And so uh, there may be a transfer that we recommend into that fund at the June town meeting, but there is not a recommendation for a transfer at this time. Do the members have any questions with regard to that of Mr. Gilberto? Okay, so do we have a motion on that? Yes. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 4, appropriate money to the stabilization fund. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I mean, I think we would all like to have extra funds to put in there, but I think we all recognize the current fiscal picture and, and the tenuous nature of, of the current fiscal picture. So um, seeing no further discussion, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Minu Pelli is aye. The next article is Article 5, Transfer Funds to other post-employment benefit, benefits liability trust fund. And I believe we voted to pass over that one. We uh, we had not yet, I believe, oh. voted that, but we're recommending it this evening. Okay. I thought we did. All right. I'm sorry. There's so many meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion on that? Just a quick question. As far as, um, is this is the one we normally put in, what, 300000 Yes, we do in June, and we did transfer funding in in June uh, for it as well. So we did. What did we put? Do we put in? I think it was three hundred um, off the top of my head. Just the, the, the updated Please. number from I think two years ago that we used. So and Liz is Liz has her Liz Liz. Is that what we? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, at June town meeting, we appropriated three hundred thousand dollars from raise and appropriate. Okay, and and then as far as uh, we usually get a. A re an update from our actuarial people as to what we should be putting in. How close are we to? Uh... Uh, Mr. O'Leary, we will uh, find that out probably in about March. Okay. But Perfect. we can we can get an estimate if, if necessary, but the whole actuarial study will be complete in March. All right. Thank you. All right. So do I have a motion on that? Ms. Any other questions? I'm sorry. Any other questions of the members? I, Mr. Guess, I guess to follow Steve's question, I guess, for Liz, are we following the last year's recommendation? We're following um, our rec our policy where we put in um, the dollar amount that represents um, the amount it costs us for our new hires, what it will cost us when they retire. Um, so yes, we are following the actuarial study. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, do I have a motion? Yep. Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 5, appropriate money to the other post employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. The next article is Article 6, Appropriate Money to the Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I did receive the financial information um, this evening and the uh, recommended transfer. So we had a, a surplus at the end of the plan year for the PFA of a total of 500. A total of a total of Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two of me. Oh, two of me. Oh, significant. Significant. Two or three times over. Yes. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Madam Chair, we received a report of a projected surplus of $555,850.81 in the PFA for the plan year that ended June 30th. As you know, the town share of that is 70% based on the premium split. And that would result in a, uh, a surplus, um, which will we anticipate will roll through to free cash to be certified by the Department of Revenue in the amount of $389,096, which we are recommending be transferred into the Participating Funding Arrangement Fund. Okay, do I have any questions, comments? None, seeing none. Do, um, that is a healthy surplus is it i have a question then what what, what was our surplus yes last year do you remember mr gilberto or just yeah so the, the surplus last year was a little lower than that four hundred and thirty thousand seven hundred ninety seven dollars um so you know we're we're, we're 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 seeing i think some of the activity with the decreased uh, um utilization of the healthcare resources due to the pandemic and I think that some of that is washing through to our, our, our amount. We also got some favorable news with regard to our premium, um, where we are expecting to receive a, a credit um, from Blue Cross as well because of reduced utilization. But that credit, of course, is something that gets offset by um, our, um, our plan year increases as well um, as we look ahead to um, the long-term impact of the pandemic financially. So there'll be more to come on that aspect of it. This component only relates to the PFA itself and our surplus. But yes, we've done well. Uh, year over year, we've done well. We did well again this year. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Strudeau, do I have a motion? For Article 6? Yes. No. Are we <laughs> I mean, it's not here. I can I'm do pretty it. pretty sure we're recommending a transfer. So we, so we, and we, we previously recommended yeah. this article because we knew, we knew. Oh, I'm sorry. We already recommended. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. You just were giving us a dollar figure today. I was, sorry. correct. Sorry about that. Article seven, amend the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. Mr. There's Gilbert. no amendments to be recommended at this time. Um, we'll review the status at the meeting before the Saturday town meeting. Um, so there's no recommended action further at this point. Okay. Article eight, rescind authorization to borrow. We do not anticipate having any authorizations to be rescinded and are therefore recommending a vote to pass over. Article, uh, Mr. S no, any questions? Seeing none, Mr. Studo, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to <clears throat> recommend passing over article eight, rescind authorization to borrow. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Minya Pelli is aye. Article nine is to amend the fiscal year 2021 capital budget. Madam Chair, um, if it's okay with you and the members, I'd like to share my screen to review a report of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, from their meeting on Friday. Sure. 
As the board members uh, may recall, we um, we received a recommendation to reduce the scope of the capital improvement plan for the June town meeting. And so we only went with the items that were necessary at that point in time. Um, we um, then circulated a request for an update from our um, uh, departments, including the school department for any projects that might need to be um, addressed. And so we received response back um, and it was a recommendation or request that four of the previous, previously submitted articles be um, submitted for funding this October and that a fifth one be submitted um, for consideration as a new item, but one that was um, time sensitive um, and that was also uh, recommended um, to come um, to be to be funded in October. So I'll share my screen. All right. And I think everybody should see a slide that says Article 9. Does everyone see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, looking at the, the the budget, there were five projects as I as I mentioned. The first two are school department projects that were submitted as consideration for the fiscal year 2021 capital budget. Um, they were submitted last October. One is the Hood School Lift, a uh, thirty-five thousand dollar project. Um, which we are proposing to be funded um, with an appropriation from the debt capital stabilization fund. The second is an HVAC uh, project for the little school um, as well, um, which was um, submitted in October. It predates the COVID um, um, situation and um, but was a capital project submitted by the school committee for consideration this year. That's a $65,000 project that is proposed to be funded using a transfer from the debt stabilization fund. Um, there were three DPW projects, two of which were submitted for consideration for fiscal year 21 last October. One was for Upper Elm Street drainage. So this would be the second component, um, excuse me, the third component of funding for this project. Um, as the board members may remember, we had requested funding for some engineering work and design for drainage improvements on the stretch of Elm Street between Elm and Washington and Haverhill Streets. Um, it's an area where the pavement is in tough condition and that there are um, um, issues with the drainage. And so our consulting engineer had worked through and identified a plan for improving the drainage in that area. One component of that plan was a very costly culvert um, on the, on the uh, I guess, southeast end this funding does not address that, but we're confident after talking with engineering that um, we could fund the improvements to that culvert at a late, later point in time. This would improve the balance of drainage, including, including catch basins and other um, devices um, between um, Washington and Winter, and, well, excuse me, Washington and Elm and Haverhill Streets on Upper Elm Street. There's also an additional um, allocation of funding for paving um, that has been previously set aside for the paving of this project. So this is really the last piece to get this project uh, potentially moving and the DPW has a goal of uh, addressing the project and doing construction next construction season. And so having the funding in place now um, would give them the opportunity to do that. And the final thing I'll just note is, well, this is for drainage rather than for paving. Uh, we, did, um, we did not fund the uh, customary town road appropriation of funding at the June town meeting. Um, so uh, in lieu of that, we have this, um, this, this allocation, which would allow us to complete a uh, construction project that was already in the design phase um, with the exception of the culverts, which um, uh, the order of magnitude was, was significant and not necessary as part of this phasing of the project. Um, there was a meeting held with the Conservation Commission, a hearing, um, I believe in January or February, maybe even as far back as November of last year. And so the residents are aware of the project and what the uh, intention is. Um, and um, the uh, DPW is looking to, to move forward on that. Um, the library exterior project um, was a project that was funded at town meeting um, going back a year and a half at this point. Um, it is a project that has been delayed and has also um, along the way been identified to have uh, additional scope beyond what the initial intention was, which was to focus on the siding and some of the, um, the decorative coin 
elements of the building. There is some additional uh, wood rot that we want to make sure we have sufficient funding to address and the capital improvement planning committee, um, you know, they expressed their frustration at the project not being fully funded, um, the request not being fully requested at the beginning um, of the plan, but this, this additional funding would, we believe, allow us to complete this siding project at a very important historical building here in town. Um, and I should add that um, through the leadership of Don Kelleher, who I know was on the call this evening, um, we were able to get the Historic District Commission to uh, agree to use synthetic materials uh, that will look just like um, wood, uh, but have a longer, uh, longer lasting life um, to be used on the building. And then the uh, final project is a police locker room project, which is estimated to be a $25,000 project to be funded by debt stabilization. This is a project that would uh, add locker room uh, space to ensure that we are um, complying with uh, equal access for both male and uh, female police officers. And this is being done in anticipation um, of a uh, female police officer who is uh, eligible and, and um, uh, for, uh, for hire um, to be uh, starting here uh, with the police department in uh, the spring of next year. It's a project where the police chief and the building superintendent have looked at the building and, and looked at all the options and identified uh, an option for um, uh, adding a locker space in an upper floor of the building um, in an underutilized area of the building um, to create space for female locker room um, on the basement floor, the basement level uh, where the other locker facilities are. So these projects would total $175,000 appropriated in debt stabilization funding and $680,000, which would be bonded between the Upper Elm Street and the library exterior project. Me, Madam but, Chair, I feel to ask whether Mr. Kelleher wanted to make that presentation. <laughs> so yes, I, would, yes, him. I do have a comment. Mr. Kelleher. Michael, Michael you, I, you left off one of the projects, the uh, police station ventilation, 50,000. Oh. Your total is correct. We just have one item that's oh, there you on, go. on the list. I must have double counted when I use my iPhone calculator. <laughs> so there is a there. Is, I can modify this for the hearing, Madam Chair. Um, I know you yourself and Mrs. Gonzalez were in, in the in the conversations as well. I will modify this to add that. I apologize. <laughs> that's included in the bottom line figure, right? It is, yes. Yeah. So I added it on another screen, I think, okay. uh, where, the, where the correct summary was, but didn't list it here. All and right. That would be funded using, using uh, debt stabilization funds. Okay. So um, questions. Does anyone have questions? Mr. O'Leary? No, I was just, the addition didn't, it didn't add up, but 50,000 was missing. So that makes sense. All were the uh, projects that need to be done and completed. So uh, my, my, although just on the upper Elm Street, uh, Mr. Gilberto, on the, uh, the additional drainage, because I was at the hearing on the Conservation Commission. And I think when we first talked about this, I was on the Capital Approval Planning Committee you know, several years ago. Um, how much was that drainage that's being cut out of the project amount to? Do you remember, Don? Because I thought that was a significant improvement that was needed. And now we're going to be repaving the street and have to dig it up at a later date. That's my only concern. Let me look. The drainage was was pretty significant. Um, the en engineer thought it did not need to be done at this point in time, though. Um, I'm not sure. I just, I, I just, I thought it was included in the discussion with the conservation commission. Drainage infrastructure, eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars from the, the last uh, um, report we got prior so, to the town meeting. So, so that's three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars more to do that one other portion of the project. No, eight hundred and seventy-five more. More. Says the drainage infrastructure. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Culvert replacement was six hundred and seventy thousand dollars. I'll say it's so 120 different, maybe. Another 670 to do the culvert. Okay. In addition, in addition to the 550 you're looking at there. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Waller, any questions? Nope. nope no questions for me. Mr. Studo, any questions? Nope. 
Mrs. Gonzalez, any questions? Nope, all set. So do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 9, MNFY 2021 Capital Budget. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. And Minnie Pelly is aye. Article 10 is appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Mr. Gilberto? Madam Chair, through you, uh, we prepared this motion indicating that there would be a recommendation at town meeting, but I believe based on further information, the board could consider a vote to recommend passing over the article at this time. Any uh, questions on that? Seeing none, do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to <clears throat> recommend passing over Article 10 appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Minya Pelli is aye. Article 11 is appropriate money for Martin's Pond water treatment. Mr. Gilberto, I believe we recommended this one. Correct. Anything further on that? There is not. All right. And we have Article 12, which is Fun Town Building Repairs. I believe we also recommended that one. I could be wrong, though. Yep. Did I lose you? No, nope, Ma Madam Chair, I had it as a recommendation to be made at town meeting, and uh, we were working... We have been working with DPW over the past few weeks to identify projects. Um, and I went to them and I asked, you know, if there are projects that we thought we could reasonably complete, um, you know, between now and the next town meeting. And the feeling was that there were, um, I, I traditionally will have an itemized um, listing of them. I do not have that, but I can tell you that they are evaluating, meaning DPW, uh, miscellaneous improvements to the third meeting house at the request of the elder services director as well as to town hall. And, and in addition to there is some asbestos abatement um, that uh, we would look to do at the fire station, all of which would total $50,000. Uh, it would be my hope to be able to give the board a better breakdown of those exact projects on the morning at town meeting. But our hope is that you would consider voting to recommend it. Discussion. Anyone? This is just the annual $50,000 we put up to Band-Aid things. Yes. Yes. Okay. Expensive Band-Aid. All right. Do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 12, Fun Town Building Repairs. Any second to that? Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? Is it recommend a town meeting or is it recommend? To recommend. Would be to recommend. So I think Mr. Studo's motion. Did I say recommend the town meeting? I think so. Sorry. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 12 Found Town Building Repairs. <laughs> That's why I was wondering why Mr. O'Leary didn't second it. All right. Selective hearing, it's called. Okay. So Mr. S the first motion is withdrawn. Shall we withdraw the first motion and we make the motion to recommend? That's what Mr. Studo just did. Do I have a second? Oh, second. second. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Instead of me listening to poor Mr. Studo, I was wondering why didn't Mr. O'Leary second that one? And now I know. All right. So Mr. Studo uh, motion, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Article 13 is appropriate money for historical buildings. Madam Chair, um, 
this isn't the article that we discussed earlier. It relates to the historical society and the um, the Putnam House property. Uh, I believe it's the board's intention to uh, to recommend, and I think I had asked at the last meeting that we um, try to put in motion some of the administrative steps that we did earlier this evening. Um, so I, I would believe the board would feel comfortable with recommending the article at this point. In the amount, and I know when we'll, we're going to recommend, and it was for the amount of $10,000. That's correct. Okay. So I, do I have any discussion on that? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 13, establish fund account for historical buildings. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Manu Pelli is aye. Article 14 is to fund a hazard mitigation plan update. Mr. Gilberto. You have recommended that article, Madam Chair. And is it, uh, can you remind us of the amount of funding? $25,000. Okay. Article 15 is to accept Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 33, Section 59, Effect of Military Service on Salary, Seniority, and Leave Allowances of Public Employees. We also recommended this one too, right? That's it's correct. already our practice and we just want to formally accept it. That's any, correct. Any questions of the members? Okay. Article 16 is to fund the Route 28 Main Street study and redesign. And that's also been recommended by the board, Madam Chair, so no further actions required. And the amount of the fund? We ended month? up going with the recommendation of $90,000. The initial request was for two hundred, dollars but we had spoken with the Mass Department of Transportation. I think we're all comfortable with starting with the ninety. dollars for a study um, and potentially being able to take advantage of some state assistance for the next phases of design. Okay, so that concludes the um, article. Look at the, look at the money we saved, right? <laughs> for now. Hand up, uh, Kate, if there's a hand up, Don. Oh, hand I'm up. sorry, just. Question on article three, is there an amount for that? Is that the 200,000? Is that the capital improvement fund on? Yeah. Yes, it would be $200,000, which I believe is the number you have yep. historically recommended. Yep. I know uh, I checked the report from the spring. I didn't see that component of it because I know it was abbreviated. Right. But I think Liz and I just went off of what it's been in previous years. 200 is correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question or a comment to make in regards to that. So for FY21, it's 200,000, but in the capital plan that Don put together, um, FY22 would be 250,000. So I just want everybody to be aware of that. So this year it's 200, next year it's 250. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ro Ms. Roth. All right, so let's, we're gonna quickly do these assignments. Mrs. Um, Roth has her hand up. Has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. I don't have a split screen. I apologize. Mrs. Hurlbut? You're on mute. Yeah, I know. I was trying to unmute myself. I have a question concerning the Martin's water, uh, Martin's Pond water treatment. Could you please give me a dollar amount and a source of a source of funding? The dollar amount is $25,000 and the recommended funding source is free cash. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? I'm Mr. Gilberto. I'm not paying attention to chat. So, any. We only any... had one comment in chat, and it was to tell us that we were live on the air. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, with um, 16 articles, well, I, I figured we I could give each of us four. And if Mr. Studo's not here, we'll each take one of his. How's that? <laughs> All right, so Mr. Studer, we'll give you numbers one through, we'll give you, you know what, we'll give you the last ones. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, you wanna take articles one through four? Sure. And um, Mr. O'Leary, five through eight? Sure. And Mr. Walner, nine through 12? Sure. 
Did I do that wrong? I'll take her. I'll take 13 through 16. Uh, I it's counted been, wrong. It been three each. <laughs> that's okay. Yes. All right. We should have done three each. I'm sorry. I counted wrong, but I don't know about Mr. Studo. So <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Studo may have a delivery on the way. So. Uh, and change our mind just before the meeting. And we can change our mind. You're right, Mr. Walner. All right. Is are you comfortable with that, Mr. Studo? And if, and if you're and if you're there, we're gonna we're gonna each do three each. So you'll do the last three. How's that? Okay. We can just take three at a time. Okay, okay. great. Let's make it easy. All right. Um, the the next order of business. So we have five minutes prior to the eight o'clock virtual warrant article informational hearing and our uh, one other thing is to affirm the designation of the public safety director to file the report of the moderator's declaration to declare a recess and continue the town meeting with the attorney general's office. Mr. Gilberto. This is a procedural action to affirm um, something that's in the structure of our charter and ensure that we are complying with state law regarding um, the uh, declarations associated with the change in the town meeting date. Probably more notably, um, I can report that the Attorney General has accepted our report. Um, so the report was required to be filed within 10 days of the moderator signing it. Um, so this is a ratification of the authority after the fact, but we were required to do the same thing for the, let me think now, the August special town meeting when we initially delayed it. But um, you know, it's good news that that, that report changing the date from October 5th to the October 3rd was accepted by the Attorney General. Okay. Any questions? Mr. Studo, a motion on that? Madam Chair, I move to affirm the designation of the Public Safety Director to file the report of the moderator's declaration to postpone town meeting with the Attorney General's office. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And uh, Manu Pelli is aye. We have a few minutes. I know that um, we have the informational um, hearing notice, Mr. Gilberto. Was that something that you want read into the record? Right. Be, Madam Chair, yes. I know we'll wait till eight to read that read that at the opening of the of the meeting but in the meantime um we could we could take um minutes maybe yeah you want to do a minutes or a read <clears throat> a first read through the policy mr gilberto which one do you think will be faster uh probably the minutes um, all right all right let's take it we'll take a little bit out of order and we'll do the minutes mr studo Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 18, 2020 executive session minutes as written. Second. Okay. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. <clears throat> Pelly is aye. And also thanking Jane for keeping that on our radar. Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 27, 2020 regular session minutes as written. I'll second. I have motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? I just want to double check. Is that the one I missed? This is the August, which one? Yes, it is, Mr. O'Leary. All right, so I will be abstaining. It's too long ago for us to recall. All right, so... <laughs> Mr. O'Leary is an abstain. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to approve the August 31st, 2020 regular session minutes as written. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. I'm sorry, this is this is which one? I'm sorry. August 31st. I was here for that one. Okay. <laughs> I Mr. Walner. Aye. 
Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. I think we have one more <laughs> set, right, Mr. Studo? No. Just three? Yep. All right. All right, so it's 8 p.m. and we are going to call the virtual warrant article informational hearing <clears throat> order. And we have uh, Mr. Gilberto in the notification in the packet. Do you know what page that's on? Page 85, Madam Chair. Okay. Okay, this is a notice of virtual informational hearings. The North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that a virtual hearing on the following articles contained in the October 3rd, 2020 town meeting warrant will be held Monday, September 21st, 2020 at 8 p.m. Please note that October town meeting was rescheduled from October 5th to October 3rd. The hearing may be accessed via the internet with the Zoom link there and the via phone, uh, the mobile and dial-in and meeting ID and uh, meeting ID number are incorporated. This hearing will represent an opportunity for residents to learn more about the articles on the town meeting warrant to ask questions and to engage in discussion in advance of the October town meeting, a listing of warrant articles is as follows. Article one, here and act on reports of town officers and committees. Article two, prior year bills. Article three, transfer funds to capital improvement stabilization fund. Article four, appropriate money to stabilization fund. Article five, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Article six, appropriate money to participating funding arrangement fund. Article seven, amend the FY 2021 operating budget. Article eight, rescind authorization to borrow. Article nine, amend the FY 2020 <clears throat> capital budget. Article 10, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Article 11, appropriate money for Martin's Pond water treatment. Article 12, fund town building repairs. Article 13, appropriate money for historical buildings. Article 14, Fund Hazard Mitigation Plan Update. Article 15, Accept Mass General Laws, Chapter 33, Section 59. Effective military service on salary, seniority, and leave allowances of public employees. Article 16, Fund the Route 28 Main Street Study and Redesign. This hearing is held pursuant to Sections 18 through 25 of Chapter 38 of the Massachusetts General Laws, the Open Meeting Law. Any interested citizen, is welcome to virtually attend and participate in this hearing. Notice of explanation. It is the unanimous desire of the North Reading Select Board to encourage and allow the highest level of public participation in making the decisions that affect North Reading. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency, the Select Board has limited the number of warrant articles so that the town meeting on October 3rd can be conducted in a more safe and efficient manner. This warrant article hearing is intended to represent an opportunity for extended virtual discussion in advance of town meeting. We sincerely hope that you will join us for this hearing on September 21st, 2020 at 8 p.m. Signed by the members of the select board. Okay, Mrs. Gonzalez has her hand raised. Mrs. Gonzalez. I noticed I was demoted to vice clerk. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't actually, I didn't actually read that, but for the record, Miss, Mrs. Gonzalez is actually the vice chair. So, uh, does anyone want to step up to be the vice clerk? Um, just kidding. That's not, that's just, I appreciate the fact that my voice is not listed. That's not the purpose of our hearing this evening. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, we're joined by several participants, and we just did a quick review of these um, articles. Mr. Gilberto, how, what's your pleasure on how to proceed here? Take, you're on mute.
Okay, sorry about that. Um, Madam Chair, I do have a PowerPoint presentation um, as I customarily do, and I will try to move um, as quickly as reasonable through it, um, but we'll certainly stop to answer any questions along the way, Madam Chair. So if we go through your PowerPoint presentation as to each article, we'd invite any participants that um, have a have a question, we'll stop after each one if there's a question on, on them. And if anyone wants to ask a question, you can use the raise hand function. We'll check the chat to see if you have questions. And if there's anyone joining us by telephone, we'll just double check um, at the end of each article to see if anyone by telephone has a comment. All right. Okay. Perfect. Madam Chair, with your permission, I'll share my screen. Yes. And I will take us through and I know I'm kind of looking across the screen here to to where it's showing up on my computer. So I sorry, I'm sorry about that. But I don't know how I can quickly correct this issue. <laughs> so does everyone see a slide that begins uh, with virtual warrant article hearing? Yes. yes. Okay, great. So the October annual town meeting, which was originally called by the select board for Monday, October 3rd at seven o'clock PM has been rescheduled by act of the moderator in conjunction with the select board, the board of health and the public safety officials to Saturday, October 3rd, 2020 at 11 o'clock AM at Arthur Kenny field at 189 park street. And residents were mailed a warrant uh, to their homes that went out in the mail, I believe, on Thursday of last week. And residents are reporting that they received it on Friday, Saturday. And I heard the chair say she received hers today. Moving through very quickly, we do have a number of funding sources that um, are regularly considered at um, town meeting. Uh, the most significant one is free cash, which has been submitted to the Department of Revenue and for which we are awaiting certification. I have spoken with the the uh, town's finance director, and she does not believe that what we ex what we should expect to receive certified would preclude us from doing uh, any of the actions that we've talked about earlier this evening. Um, in the interest of time, the only other item I'll highlight is right here, debt capital stabilization fund, because we are pr proposing to fund some small capital projects uh, out of that fund. This is a summary of the funding articles. I'm not gonna go through it here because I'll address it on an article by article basis. Article one is the standard hearing and acting on reports of town officers and committees. I have not heard of any uh, requests for reports, but as the board members know, some members were, um, some uh, committees uh, that may have wanted to report uh, were asked to defer their reports at the June town meeting. So it's possible we'll be contacted to hear our reports from some committees. Okay, I mean, that's pretty standard, but does anyone have any questions about that? I see none. All right, Mr. Go, <laughs> move on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Article two, the customary article to fund uh, prior year bills, uh, which were received after the end of the fiscal year. At this time, we do not have any known prior year bills um, and we are uh, will continue to review um, things as we lead up to the October town meeting. Okay. Any questions on that? Seeing none, I see none. To move on to Article 3. Article 3 would be to transfer funds to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund, which has a current balance of just under $800,000. Um, as is um, in our customary capital financing plan, we are recommending a transfer of $200,000 from free cash, which would increase the balance to just shy of $1 million. Questions? And Madam Chair, because of the screen share, I cannot see the chat, just so you're aware. I, I'll be able to see it afterwards. I am, I am checking, but I... I don't see any hands up and I don't see any questions in chat. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Article four would be the appropriation of funding to the town's stabilization fund or rainy day fund, which stands at over $3.6 million. Um, in an effort to make sure that the town's financial position remains flexible and liquid heading into our June town meeting, where we expect to be dealing with a difficult budget for fiscal year 2022, 
we are recommending that this article be passed over and that any transfer in be considered um, at that June town meeting or a future town meeting. Okay, any questions? Let me just quickly, I do not see any hands raised. No chat, no chat questions. Okay. Article five, transferring funds to other post-employment benefits fund. This is a transfer that we regularly make um, generally from raise and appropriate in the amount of $300,000. Um, our normal financing plan does not require a transfer in at this fall town meeting and we are therefore recommending that it be passed over. No, no hands raised, no chat. Pretty self-explanatory. Article six would appropriate funding to the participating funding arrangement fund. This fund is a reserve account to pay for the town's portion of future employee health insurance costs. Yeah, We're recommending a transfer of $389,096, which reflects the town's share of the remaining funds from the fiscal year 2020 employee health insurance program. There is a separate employee portion, which is reserved separately uh, by the town treasurer um, and the board has recommended this article. All right, any questions? See, I see no hands raised, no questions. Okay. Article seven would be to consider amending the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. Um, there are no anticipated transfers at this time. However, the finance director and I will monitor department activity and needs leading up to the morning of town meeting. Um, but we're not expecting any transfers to be required. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? Seeing none. Seeing none in the chat either. Article eight would rescind authorizations to borrow. There are no bonds recommended to be rescinded at this time. And the recommendation has been to pass over the article. Any questions? I see none. All right. Article nine would be an amendment to the fiscal year 2021 capital budget. Projects were recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee to be passed over in June due to limited bond market and the overall financial unknowns. So there were only a few that were funded with the intent to review the list in advance of October. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee uh, re uh, met on Friday um, to consider requests and the following projects were recommended. The um, Hood School Lift, for $35,000 to be funded from debt capital stabilization fund. The little school HVAC system, which would be funded from the debt capital stabilization fund in the amount of $65,000. Upper Elm Street drainage. This is the continuation of work planning for a project to um, install drainage and reconstruct a portion of Elm Street. That would be a $550,000 bond. The library exterior, this would be in addition to $170,000 in funding previously approved at the June 2019 town meeting. Our hope is that this will give us sufficient funds to address not only the, um, the siding in the library, the historic coin uh, features of the design of the library, but also any rot issues that we think may be underneath some of the siding. Um, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to, to now complete this project um, as soon as possible uh, with construction likely occurring next, uh, the beginning of next construction season. The same is true for the Upper Elm Street project as well. Police HVAC system. This was a request submitted in fiscal year 2021. Last for it submitted for 2021 last October. It's a fifty thousand dollar project for uh, funded uh, out of debt stab, uh, debt capital stabilization. And the police department locker room. This is a new project that was funded, uh, requested to be funded in the amount of twenty five thousand dollars from the debt stabilization fund, um, in order to ensure we're able to accommodate. Um, an anticipated uh, female police officer hiring. Okay. And that total is $175,000 from debt stabilization and $680,000 to be borrowed. Are there any questions on this article? I see none, Mr. Gilberto. Article 10 would be to appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses associated with the secondary school building project the board has recommended that the article be passed over. Any questions? Not, I see none. 
Article 11 would appropriate money for the Martins Pond water treatment. The town has conducted an initial treatment program over the past few years. There is not sufficient funding to continue the project in accordance with the recommended schedule uh, for early next season. This article would provide funding for an invasive weed treatment program at the pond with an appropriation request of $25,000 recommended to come from free cash. Okay, any questions on this? We had a lengthy presentation not too long ago on this one. Um, seeing none. Abby I had a question. Oh, I didn't see Abby, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, could you remind me how many years this is for? the Martin's Pond um, mitigation, isn't that a multiple year um, um, uh, treatment plan? It is, I believe it's for three years. I know, I think Mr. Warner may know that for certain. Yeah, they, they, it's, they're fully expecting that if they do this in the spring, they expect it to last at least three years. Matter of fact, I think it comes with a three year guarantee. Okay. Uh, so it could be lasting even longer. Okay, thank you. They did in their presentation too. They've been very, um, they've been very restrained. Although they they've taken care of a lot of the issues at the pond, but they've been very careful. They've been very conservative with how they're utilizing the funds to get. Yeah, them. no, I don't have a problem with it. I just needed to refresh my memory because I'm I'm without portfolio, so to speak, up here in Maine. And I do have a finance committee meeting on Wednesday night where we have to go over and vote the warrants. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, we're just excited someone had a question. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Article 11. I mean 12, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilberto. It's okay. Article 12 would fund town building repairs. The DPW is evaluating miscellaneous improvements to the third meeting house and town hall, as well as asbestos abatement at the fire station for a total anticipated to be $50,000 to be funded from free cash. This is a recurring article generally done um, in June. This year was deferred to October where we are funding um, some um, capital projects that are below the threshold of $25,000 uh, for the maintenance and good order of our, uh, of our facilities. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none. Seeing none, Mr. Gilberto. Article 13 would appropriate money for historical buildings. By way of information for the public, the Minute and Militia has maintained and added buildings at 27 Bow Street, also known as Map 54, Parcel 63, the property of the Putnam House, which is opposite the third meeting house. They've requested assistance maintaining the buildings over the long term. This article would appropriate funding for the repair, maintenance, and improvements of the historical buildings on those grounds. The amount is proposed to be an initial $10,000 appropriated from free cash. There is an agreement with the town, between the town and the North Reading Historical and Antiquarian Society that would need to be modified to um, ensure that the society was complying with its agreement by allowing this fund, funding to be expended. Um, and the select board was asked and earlier approved establishing a corresponding gift account into which residents could make donations in support of um, repairs, uh, maintenance and improvements to those historical buildings. And I do have a map that was put in the warrant um, that we identified there. So this is the Reverend Daniel Putnam House, which is visible on Bow Street. It's the barn, which is also visible. And there are a few smaller historical buildings that uh, were moved to the location and constructed and reconstructed at the location. And then more recently, the farm museum uh, on the southerly side of the parcel. Well. An outdoor privy. Yeah, I'll support that. As long as we can use it. Uh, it's there, but I don't believe it's functioning. Oh, all right. <laughs> Decorative purposes. And if, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure that there's somebody who will tell me that I'm wrong about that. All right. So to any, any questions on this or comments? Okay, I do not see any. I don't see any, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, uh, Article 14, Funding the Hazard Mitigation Plan Update. This article would fund uh, an update to the plan, which expires in 2021. It's a five-year interval on the plan, so it was last done in 2016 or 17, I believe. Plan is required for eligibility for many federal grants, including reimbursement in the wake of disasters. 
So we commonly are reimbursed for uh, funding um, for such purposes as snowstorms, um, snow and ice storms with wind damage, uh, flooding, um, and um, this maintains our eligibility uh, with the plan needing to be completed by June 30th of 2021. And the amount is contemplated as $25,000 and the funding source is contemplated to be free cash. Okay, any questions? None. Article 15 would accept the provision of the general laws regarding the effective military service on salary, seniority, and leaves of absences for public employees. Um, the article, if approved, would accept a provisional law that allows certain pay and benefits to employ serving in uh, to, to employees are serving in the military. And it's most notably during training that this becomes relevant. Um, I would note that, as, as I said at a previous meeting, this has been a practice that the town has been following for a number of years, and this would just codify our um, that practice through the acceptance of town meeting. Okay, questions, comments? No hands, no comments. Article 16, the funding of Route 28 and Main Street study and redesign. The article would provide funding for a traffic of Carter study and or an initial design for the reconstruction of Route 28 and Main Street. The total we're recommending is $90,000, which, which would allow us to conduct the traffic and corridor study with a goal being of continuing to work with the State Department of Transportation to identify resources that may be able to assist with a further design. So this is a sort of a phasing of the initial project, which was requested at $200,000 by just breaking off the initial um, study component of it to move things forward with it. Okay, do we have any questions or comments? Seeing none. I don't see any. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Okay, so where that concludes our informational hearing. Thank you for members of our town for joining us on that. We can move on to the next order of business, which is, excuse me, one second. Let me get to the back to the agenda. Our next order of business is board member reports. Let's start with Mr. Studo today. Okay, um, so I was at a, a meeting of the CPC and Mr. Bruce Wheeler is considering a development by Town Center. And it's, uh, I think the, the exact address is 146, 148 Park Street. And it's just an initial discussion that he brought up, 44 units of senior housing. Um, he wants to do uh, market rate. There was just a brief discussion of, you know, what if any zoning needed to be changed. But again, it's very brief and in the infancy. And, uh, you know, there's still a couple of boards and committees that need to go by it, um, including the historical commission. So and then there was just a sh brief discussion if uh, if Mr. Wheeler would also be willing to take a look at other parcels for um, affordable housing, you know, is something that we know the town needs. So again, very, uh, I mean, the discussion went on a little bit, but it's very in its infancy and it was just more of, uh, you know, what needs to be done, if any, before it gets presented to a, a bigger audience. So at the town. Okay. And just a quick question to, so do you know, is this, uh, this is where the, uh, uh, Jared McLean house is correct behind it. So he, he would, uh, he would be, uh, sorry, I left out the thank you. He would, he would be purchasing, uh, the adjacent property that has the, um, the steel, um, you know, what I'm talking about with a garage, the, the steel garage. And then there's that small, uh, gas, not gas station, but that site that does the inspections. Right. So that, that's what it, it, it would be. So it would be, the entrance would be coming right after the, um, police department. So that's where he's looking to make it. Of course, with the McLean house not being touched. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
that'll generate some discussion over the next several months, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Studo. Mr. O'Leary? Uh, let's see. We have, um, first of all, I just think it's important that we acknowledge and mention the, uh, the passing of uh, Brad Jones Sr. Um, Brad Jones Sr., Mr. Sr. Jones, um, contributed a significant amount of uh, time and effort and energy uh, to make this community what it is today. I mean, he spent a lot of time, many years on the Finance Committee, certainly uh, one of the founding uh, father, fathers of the Citizen Scholarship Foundation. He was on several building committees, uh, an active member of the community. And uh, for me personally, uh, I had spent uh, hours and hours uh, conversing with Mr. Jones over the years and taking his counsel. Um, he certainly offered it a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and he, uh, again, just a, a tremendous individual who uh, contributed a significant amount. I have certainly appreciated all the dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of uh, meetings that I've had with him and uh, his offering his uh, advice, counsel, and uh, opinions on most everything. And uh, wonderful fellow, uh, great member of the community. So again, my condolences to uh, his wife, Jean, and of course, his son, Brad, and uh, the son and daughter. And uh, again, thank them for sharing him with us. And again, it's true loss to the community, but uh, we had him for a long time and it's greatly appreciated. As far as the, uh, a couple of meetings again, uh, one with the Board of Health, I met with the Board of Health, uh, tuned into their meeting, uh, I think it was last week or the week before. They've been extremely active over the last several months, as everybody's well aware, and continue to meet on a uh, much more regular basis than they have generally been accustomed to, uh, covering a myriad of uh, issues and concerns and that are facing the community in direct relationship to COVID-19. Uh, that particular meeting, I took the opportunity to, uh, the superintendent of schools was there, the uh, um, chairman of the school committee also tuned in because they've been working uh, very closely in collaboration with the, uh, with the school department, with school opening. And again, I congratulated both the Board of Health and they have the board and the uh, uh, school department for their cooperative efforts and working with one another. I also congratulate the uh, superintendent and chairman of the school committee for working closely with the, um, the, the teachers union. Uh, as many of you are aware, uh, we have not had any problems um, with the reopening in relation to school personnel uh, because they've been included in discussions all along the way. And uh, you know, so anyway, the Board of Health again, dealing with a lot of issues. I have a lot going for, going on going forward. Uh, we also requested and they're meeting, is it tomorrow night or Tuesday night, Wednesday night? Whatever, I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday of this week. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we had asked them, again, the administrator was tuned in to, I asked them to uh, consider um, the opportunity to allow us to have our town meeting inside uh, should the weather not be permitting, because again, to keep postponing it and to have it outside is going to become more and more, uh, more difficult. They're gracious enough and more than willing to uh, put it on their agenda. It'll be discussed uh, at their, their meeting this week. So it, it appears as though they're willing to uh, work with us to try and uh, effectuate uh, getting through October town meeting on a timely basis and in a safe in the safest manner possible. So we told them it's going to be outside, but uh, we need an opportunity to do it inside. But, uh, then let's see, water health. And then we had uh, water and wastewater. Uh, we've met a couple of times since our last meeting. Um, things are progressing a bit in relation to, uh, and again, uh, Mr. Gilberto, are we going to be having our uh, consultants come in uh, shortly to address the board? Because I think it's important that we, we have a forum. Uh, our permitting through MEPA and the intimation uh, transfer requests that have been made uh, have actually been approved. And those are a big deal. <laughs> it's a significant uh, achievement. It's been in the works for uh, for years now. And a concerted uh, effort has been made by uh, our administration, uh, members of this board, previous boards, and, uh, and even the town of Andover in order to effectuate uh, the permitting process. So uh, we're happy to report that those things have been approved, but I think a report from our consultants and from our uh, DPW director and our water superintendent would be appropriate at a, at a future meeting. Uh, as far as the um, uh, 
contracts for uh, building the uh, chlorination plants. Uh, we had some good healthy discussion in relation to the timetables and going back out to bid. Uh, we're recommending that they go back out to bid. Uh, it appears as though we're going to be doing it about within a three week time period, pushing out the, um, the effective date of when the uh, chlorination plant will be put online in time for the spring season of April, 2022. So basically pushed out almost a, a full year from where we want it to be. We want it to be July, 2021, <clears throat> but because of the bidding process and what's going on and uh, the lack of bids and um, we can push it out a little bit more and still effectuate uh, meeting the needs of chlorinating the water at the heavy use time um, a year from the spring. So things are moving along and um, we have another meeting I believe this week uh, on the water and wastewater. Uh, we're also discussing in relation to wastewater, uh, a rerouting of what we had originally planned on. Um, if you recall, uh, we're talking about putting sewerage up, originally right up through Route 28, connecting up to Lawrence. Uh, the town of Andover has asked us to take another look at, at a different route. And we've actually uh, had our consultants take a look at it and. We're now looking at uh, going up 125, 114, directly up into Lawrence uh, Sewer District, uh, that route, rather than going up Route 28. Again, if you recall last year, Andover experienced uh, significant damage from the uh, gas line expo explosions and have already redone all of their streets, including the downtown area, and not too enamored by the idea in the not too distant future of tearing it back up again. Um, our consultants tell us that actually going up 125 and 114 may actually be a little more cost effective and a little bit easier route. So we have to have some conversations with the town of North Andover because there's a small section of North Andover that we would have to go through. And uh, the administration, the administrator was going to reach out and uh, get those conversations going. So you're up to date. Got a lot of stuff going on still. And thank you. We'll probably have that um, as an item on one of our upcoming meetings, our, our, our agendas have been pretty pretty well packed with a lot of things that we're trying to tend to, but where that's getting back on the back on the tracks, it might be a good idea to have a little bit more time for the members to talk about an upcoming select board meeting. And I think it's just important for the public to recognize that, you know, while all this other stuff is going on, you know, this whole permitting process was significant, a significant undertaking and we've actually achieved it. So that's... Uh, that's huge, and I think a uh, more detailed discussion should be had. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Walner. Yeah, um, the most significant thing I've been working on recently is we have barely uh, signed the community compact for UMass Gerontology to work with us for the Age Friendly Initiative, and we're already put together an eight-page survey and plan to send it out to the residents in maybe the next two three weeks. And the goal of that survey is to, um, it's, it's more than to just address elder services in town. It's really trying to address people who have lived in town, their kids are through school, they're 50-ish years old, and they're trying to s decide whether they stay or leave our town and what would, what would prevent them from staying in our town because we prefer they stay. They've already made a lot of community connections and building community off of that base is a good thing to do. So the survey is trying to um, take a fresh look at how do you keep adults um, engaged in their community and to uh, spend the rest of their lives here or as much as they possibly can. So that's where the approach is. Um, I think the town residents will see a postcard. It's for gonna be for 55 and older. However, you can go online and anybody can fill it out. So we welcome all ages to do that, uh, but there'll be physical mailings. Um, and you'll get a postcard if you're 55 or older, you'll get a postcard that announces um, that this is coming and about a week later, you'll get a survey. It takes about a minutes to fill out the survey, send it back and we hope to have it completed by October 30th. So we really look forward to the town participating. And um, further discussions, I've, uh, you know, I have been spending some time with UMass G Gerontology talking to that group and they have, are doing an assessment of our town and I have to say they've looked at, you know, they deal with a lot of towns and they have been very clear in saying uh, all of our community planning studies, all the recent work we have been done is like the, the best, newest, most recent fresh studies they've seen in all the towns. 
and our approach to how we're looking at aging is really innovative. And they really want to use us as a potential case study for them to improve their own, uh, their own efforts as well. We're not trying to be the same old pattern other communities have found. We're really trying to be progressive and innovative. And, uh, you know, it's really refreshing to hear that. So I'm working with uh, Kim Manzelli from the COA, Catherine McCabe-Scott from COA, and Jen Ford from Youth Services. And I guess we kind of tagged ourselves the age-friendly task force. Um, speaking of Jen Ford, they did a really nice um, review, who's our Youth Services Director. They did a nice uh, write-up on her in the transcript. Um, she really is, you know, what's she doing talking about adults? She doesn't live in her silo. She she believes in community and she connects the dots. And so, you know, we're really glad to have her on the yeah. talking to everybody. And so, you know, congratulations to Jen Ford for being recognized for doing a great job in our town. And I'm delighted to have her helping me out with this this um, this initiative as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tuan. Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, uh, the recycling committee. Um, we're, uh, they are working on um, some grant opportunities, but I'm not going to get into detail with that because um, Dan Greenberg will be speaking on that tonight, so he can explain that better. Um, and I just wanted to um, publicly honor um, Mr. Jones myself. He was a personal friend. Gene is a personal friend. Um, he was a wonderful man who could always make me laugh and had lots of stories that he loved to tell and I always enjoyed. So I just wanted to, to say that. That's it. Thank you. I, t I did too want to echo my condolences to uh, Brad, the family of Brad Jones Sr. I did not know him personally, but I have heard a lot about him but I also can easily see the impact that he left as an just what he's done for the community, which I have heard stories of his own public service, but it's very clear from um, what his son is doing. That's really a demonstration of the measure of his impact is in his own son's lengthy public service for our town and all the things his son, son does for our town. So sorry to the family for the loss of their father and their grandfather. And uh, we are there in our thoughts and prayers are in my thoughts and my prayers. And I also wanted to echo what Mr. O'Leary said as well. And that is um, to thank, uh, I don't think we can underscore this enough to just thank the, the school department, the administrators, the teachers, the staff, the uh, f from the public facilities to the superintendent, Dr. Daly, the school committee, uh, I can't uh, explain it enough or thank them enough for the remarkable effort that they have made all the hours and hours they've poured into making this school opening in the beginning of school and the blitz of information that they've offered us to walk us through this, something that we've never done before, really. And all the effort that they put in and on top of that, as they put in all that effort, they helped us get three town meetings squared away. So we've we've while they're working on all of this stuff, there we've also had a town meeting, a special town meeting. We get a new town, another town meeting, our annual town meeting coming up. So uh, just an amazing, amazing effort and a appreciation for all of the work that they've done. And they're still, you know, making sure that we're, you know, a couple of us have students um, in the system, and they're still you know, keeping in regular contact with the parents to let us know what's going on, keeping in regular contact with the kids. So um, they just deserve so much praise for the effort that they put into this. And I see the chair, Mr. Buckley's joined us. So thank you for everything that, that you, you're all doing and that you've all worked on to get this up and running so we can have a little bit of normalcy with kids back to school, sort of, <laughs> half and half. So thank you for that. And all right, so I think we can move on to public comment. Don Kelleher has his hand up. I hope that wasn't from a long time ago, Mr. Kelleher. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on the the discussion about the uh, Brad Jones Senior, I'm I'm just wondering 
if the select board is entertaining any kinds of ideas for an appropriate memorial um, for Brad. I mean, he, he, do, he, he had done so much for the town. It would be nice if there was some way of, of uh, a lasting memory of him and so, some form of a memorial. I have no idea what it would be, but just kind of planting that seed. Yeah, that would be wonderful. M Mrs. Gonzalez has her hand raised. Um, <laughs> already given this some thought, clearly. So Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kelleher. And on the planting the seed remark, um, I have spoken to um, a couple of people and was going to approach the board um, that in the spring, just a thought about maybe planting a tree in the park across the street from where they live um, would be just a nice thought we were tossing around that could be something that we could do you know, as a board, as a town, whatever, it's, it's, it's just something being talked about right now. And I thought that would be a nice thing if we could do it. Agreed. Great. We'll look forward to that. Maybe a, rem a remembrance plaque, mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Kelleher. And thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez for working on that. Mr. Buckley has his hand raised. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I can't not show up to a meeting and say something. <laughs> just wanted, to, I mean, I first, first wanted to just thank everybody for the kind words. Um, I mean, I, I know Dr. Daly and Michael Connolly in particular have done a ton of work, the teachers union and, and all of that. And so it's been, again, we'll talk about that a lot at our meeting on Thursday, but I just wanted to also thank, you know, I think what people don't understand is there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. And so the finance planning team and getting the budget passed was critical as well, because I think what a lot of people don't realize, not just web, getting the plans to get it reopened, but having all the supplies that we needed. You know, we're one of the only communities around here that has all the Chromebooks they needed. And a lot of that was due to the economic planning here where we knew what the budget was. We had the resources. I know that, you know, Michael Connolly and Liz Rourke worked really hard together on some of the CARES Act funding. So, you know, not only are we open, but almost every district around here is waiting on some of their Chromebooks, waiting on their PPE. We had all of that in place. And so a lot of that, you know, was directly related to the planning with the finance committee, the, uh, the finance planning team, the select board as well, helping with that. So, you know, that's a big piece of it as well. So thank you guys for assisting the schools in getting what we needed in order to open. Thanks, Mr. Buckley. All right. Any other comments? All set. All right. I think we can move on to our next order of business, which is to reschedule the town owned land hearing on 23 Riverside Drive, map 78, parcel 17. We, I think there was a miss misprint or a, a misvote is what it was. We voted to, to hear it on a night we weren't meeting. So we need to vote again and pick a night that we actually are meeting to, to continue the public hearing on that. Right? Okay. So <laughs> Mr. Gilberto would That's be our, probably our time. next scheduled, not the annual town meeting meeting, but the next scheduled select board meeting, right? That's correct for October. All right. There, there must be a motion on that. Everybody pull out your calendar, make sure it's right. <laughs> Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to reschedule the town owned land hearing for map 78, parcel 17, 23 Riverside Drive from September 28, 2020 to October 19, 2020 at 730. Second. All right, I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. So we'll be continued to that meeting. The next order of business is temporary outdoor dining votes may be taken and this is with regard to the governor's extension of the outdoor expanded services deadline which was set to terminate november 1st 2020 and 
the governor's order permits, order number 50 permits the um, local licensing authority to extend that deadline up to, up to and until 60 days after the governor's declaration of emergency is terminated or some other date at the board's pleasure. Mr. Gilberto? Anything else to add to that? Yes, Madam Chair, um, you are correct. Um, we are recommending that the board vote to automatically extend the outdoor dining permission um, through um, the uh, maximum period of time, which is I believe 60 days after the end of the pandemic, if I remember correctly. But we've also recommended that uh, two conditions be put in and they just be that establishments review their plans for heat and for snow removal and snow management uh, in their uh, on their properties. Uh, in light of these tents being in place. Um, this does not add any additional permitting requirement with regard to um, heat or, or snow management, um, but there are separate permitting processes uh, from, from a public sa safety standpoint that uh, interested parties would need to follow. Um, and we have prepared a motion accordingly. Okay, questions, any questions of the members? Seeing none, do I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Madam Chair, in accordance with COVID-19 order 50, I move to extend previously approved permits for temporary outdoor dining to 60 days after the end of the COVID-19 state of emergency, subject to review and approval of snow plowing, removal, and climate control plans. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? And this, this actually only extends the uh, permitting for those licenses that have already been granted. Mr. Gilberto, do you have any idea how many that is? I believe it's either six or seven at this point. Seven. All right. And anybody else that wants to come forward and ask the board can, can also get a permit that hasn't Correct. already been granted. All right. Seeing no further discussion, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manupelli is aye. Next order of business is to approve the process for remote learning enrichment programs. Vote to establish the process. And Thank you, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Gilbert. So I think uh, from previous discussions with the board, you are, you are aware that there is um, a provision under an order of the governor that allows for the establishment of so-called remote learning enrichment programs, which are basically intended to be programs exempt from, lic from, from licensure from the state um, early uh, education and care department. Um, they are um, limited in their side and, and size and what their offerings are. The order requires that the entity looking to seek to establish such an exempt program through the EEC at the state level have a sign off from a local official and the order requires that the executive, which in our case would be the uh, select board, designate uh, an official to review those um, applications. In our case, because of our unified uh, public safety structure, um, the recommendation was that it go through the public safety director. As you know, he oversees the relevant departments, most notably the fire department, the building department and the health department, which would be involved in inspecting and determining safety. Um, and so we've uh, prepared a motion accordingly, and we are asking the board to vote um, vote on that. Okay, any questions? Seeing none, Ms. No, Ms. Just, Carol Leary. All right, so this is for what, for the town to get involved in providing the programming? No, this is only a motion to um, that's required under the state order to designate who would be a uh, would be reviewing and approving any application from any entity, whether it be from our parks and recreation, which is working to see if a program is feasible, or from a church or from another organization here in town. They're required to have a local sign off. This would simply designate who that local person would be. Okay. And um, we, we and Mr. Buckley knows he's been in the meetings. The structure we have has been just that. You know, the folks I've mentioned have been involved in the discussion under the oversight of the public safety director. Okay. But in relation to the question that I was alluding to here, are we, is general government going to be getting involved or not? Or do we not know yet? 
So the short answer is we don't know yet. Um, we, we have done some extensive surveying. Um, we got some uh, a very high number of folks who were interested through the initial survey done by the, um, the school department. Um, we did an additional survey last week where we provided details of how the program would function. And when I say we, it's the Parks and Recreation Department that's doing it. Um, they provided additional detail. Um, there was a lesser number of people that were interested when they heard the details. And then within that group, we contacted, we have been contacting individuals directly and about half of that group are indicating their interest level. Um, in the meantime, um, the Parks and Recreation Department has been getting some feedback from parents. Uh, I know that um, Ms. Clemens is gonna be reaching out to the superintendent to sort of evaluate how the remote learning was set up and functioned in the first week of school, just to ensure that a program that is offered by Parks and Recreation would effectively meet the need and I, I think, and this is important for you, Mr. Buckley, we'll be reaching out to have a meeting in the next couple of days. Um, I think we're talking Wednesday or Thursday. I love meetings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We all set? Okay. Anyone else? Do we, I have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to designate the Public Safety Director as the Municipal Proving Authority for Remote Learning Enrichment Programs. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a, and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. And Manupelli is aye. Okay. Next order of business is to buy recycled policy, a first reading of a policy. And we'll have Mr. Gilberto take it away for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, myself and the Public Works Director, the Acting Public Works Director, were approached by um, Mr. Greenberg, who is joining us this evening on behalf of the Recycling Committee um, with regard to a uh, state um, grant funding program that's available. And in order for the town to become eligible for it, we would need to adopt a buy recycled policy. Um, just being you know, candid with um, you know, the board, Mrs. Gonzalez, myself and Mr. Greenberg have had some conversation. You know, I had some apprehension about a couple of drafts of the policy that were set out as templates. And um, I appreciate Mr. Greenberg, um, I think within an hour, uh, contacting the, the state to get approval on the draft policy that you see before you here this evening, which really talks about us taking steps to make attempts to try to secure 30% um, post-consumer recycled material um, or greater. Um, and so we have some avenues to try to do that um, uh, here, but we're not required to do so. Um, but I, I think it's an important sort of step in the right direction for us to embrace that as a, a purchasing process and consideration here. It's not a requirement. Um, and we've already been sort of pre-approved by the state that they are okay with a draft that you see, which you will see does not include a requirement, but it talks about a goal. Um, and um, with that, Madam Chair, I, I don't know if there are any questions, but um, if there are, um, either myself or Mr. Burke would certainly answer them. Mr. Strudo? Oh. Okay. Um, any questions? What, what page is that on? Page 118. Of 140. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're getting there. Sheesh. Okay. So my only question again to the oh. administrator is that, you know, from a operational standpoint, it's nice to say some things. And again, there's no requirement, but we are going to try and implement the suggestions here to get there or? Well, so I think I think for this evening, we're actually, I'm just gonna read the, I'm gonna read the policy and it's our first reading of that. And I think it's just more for informational purposes for the board to start to consider the policy and then maybe have some reflection on the language and perhaps you know, make our own recommendations on revisions to it. So um, 
Mr. Gilberto, I'm going to go ahead and just read the policy because we do have a lot of attendees, so we might as well let everyone know what we're talking about. Um, this is a first reading of the Town of North Reading by Recycled Policy. In recognition of the need to make more efficient use of our natural resources, create markets for the material collected in recycling programs, reduce solid waste volume and disposal costs, and serve as a model for private and public institutions, the municipal entities of the town of North Reading are committed to purchasing products which are environmentally preferable and or made of recycled materials whenever such products meet quality requirements and are available at reasonable prices and terms. To the extent practicable, the following guidelines are suggested. One, municipal department, board, commission, committee, purchases of printing and writing paper for in-house use or custom printed materials by professional printers, including copier paper, offset paper forms, stationary envelopes, notepads, and file folders. The minimum content standards should be no less than 30% post-consumer recycled material. Any decision not to procure recycled content, printing and writing paper meeting these standards should only be based on a determination that a satisfactory level of competition does not exist, that items are not available within a reasonable time period, or that items fail to meet reasonable performance standards or are only available at an unreasonable price. Two, municipal departments, boards, commissions, committee purchases, should make an effort that all contracts for printing include the inclusion of an imprint identifying the recycled content of the paper whenever practicable, along with the recycling symbol. Three, to the extent practicable, each department should implement paper reduction techniques through the use of duplexing, sharing and circulating materials, use of electronic mail, and reuse of discarded paper for draft work, scrap paper, and internal messages. And that's the proposed policy. Ms. Sarah O'Leary, I think you have more question on it. Did you have any other questions on it? No, I mean, as you pointed out, this will be a first reading and we'll have other opportunities to opine. I was just uh, looking to um, have a little more input from the administration as to the practicality of it and really what, what do we see as, uh, the ability to implement a lot of what's being suggested here. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you. I, mean, I can tell you that I, you know, I've looked at what's in here and I, I don't think that there's anything that's unreasonable. I think we're asking people to think twice when they're making a purchase about considering whether there's a, a more environmentally friendly alternative without binding ourselves to the requirement to do so. Um, I could tell you there was a reporting requirement that was in here that did greatly concern me because, as you know, we have fairly decentralized purchasing in town, and so the ability to track is not um, very strong. Um, I think it'd be great to get to that point, but I don't think that we I could in good faith say to you that we'd be able to, to meet that requirement if it were in here. And Mr. Greenberg um, was able to take that and review that change with, uh, or, or the revised draft with the approving authority, I believe, and that they signed off on it. Um, so I, I think that it, it sort of, I think it's a great step in the right direction to make sure we're making that consideration here. Um, we do have recycling bins here in the town hall. Um, they're very similar to the bins that we have in the town. They're just a little smaller. Um, we have a large plastic recycling bin as well, which we may avail make available. And this would sort of put us, put this into a consideration on the front end um, for, for folks if, if approved. And I think there's, a marked effort too that's been made to try to get to electronic transmission, elect digital storage of documents and data and electronic use of electronic transmission of, of documents, contracts to sort of reduce the, you know, reduce the extra um, pr printed materials that the town, um, I guess, disseminates to everybody. So. I think we've supported a number of those uh, those initiatives, the software initiatives, archival initiatives, things like that. Um, so it goes just beyond using recycled copy paper. I think it's just sort of a cultural shift. 
that that I, I believe the administration is already heading in that direction and has been heading in that direction. So it's, it's worthwhile, I think, to Im implement a policy that reflects where they're heading and then, do, you know, encourages everyone to do more. Okay, any other, any other discussion for our first reading? All right, so if we could just consider it, take, oh, Mr. O'Leary. I was just wondering if Mr. Greenberg wanted to offer us oh, some. Yes. Well, you did join us. Welcome, Mr. Greenberg. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, as, as, as some of you know, I've been working um, for about a year and a half now on behalf of the Recycling Committee to obtain some state-funded grants through, the, through DEP um, to, uh, I'll use the word, improve our recycling uh, program here in North Reading. Um, and the reason for the uh, recycle policy, other than it being the right thing to do, is that it's a prerequisite for applying for a grant that's called the IQ Kit grant. And that through that grant, um, the state will fund up to, I think it's $20,000 towards the development and distribution of educational material to our residents. Um, to be frank with you, and Chris Deming and I um, attended an audit of our recycling stream at the JRM site, uh, Greenworks site in Peabody. We did that last week. Um, where they dumped a truckload from the previous, we did that on Wednesday from the previous Tuesday's collections and went through it to demonstrate to us that we have, and, and, and by weight, we have 38% of contaminants in our recycling bins, which is a completely unacceptable level and which essentially makes what we're putting in the recycling bins unsellable on the market. So in order to fit, to, to, I'll, now I'll use the word fix our recycling program, I'm convinced. I know that the residents want to do the right thing, but it's very complicated about learning what needs to go into the bin and what needs not to go into the bin. And actually the list of the things that are not to go in is much longer than the list of things that are to go in. Well, we've got, we have to reduce our contamination level and they'll, they'll pay for the production and distribution of brochures and flyers and posters to educate the residents so that we can get down to a reasonable level. And this is very important because I'll remind everybody that our contract with JRM is coming up for renewal next June. And this and, and and reducing the level of contamination of our recycling stream will have a significant positive financial impact on that pricing. I can't emphasize that too much. Thank you. Thank you for your work, Mr. Greenberg. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez. I just want to thank Mr. Greenberg. Um, he puts a lot of effort and time into this. Um, and I, I'm very excited about the education part of it. As he knows, we've had that conversation. Um, it, to, to me, that's the most important thing is for people just to be aware. How can they know if we don't tell them? So um, I'm very excited about this going forward and, and hope to see it through. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. O'Leary. It's funny, under old and new business, I was going to um, bring up something I brought back, uh, brought up last spring, which was uh, recycling efforts and being expanded for uh, textiles. And when, this is something that we don't participate in right now, and we should be participating. And I've actually reached out to and haven't heard back yet from Bay State Textiles. Um, they have a, a Massachusetts school um, program where they actually collect it at the schools and then contribute money back to through, through the PTOs or back to the school departments, you know, small amounts of money based upon the tonnage that, that, uh, that's contributed. And again, you need to get that out of the waste stream too. So while it's a little bit off topic here in relation to our first reading, and, I, and again, I fully embrace uh, 
increasing our efforts here you know, in this particular area as far as the, the first reading of this policy. But I think we do need to expand our educational process to, to the general public. I think we need to expand our recycling program. And um, I think we should have someone from the administration or even the recycling committee reach out to the Space State Textiles uh, to get involved uh, here in North Reading to do it. So, um, Dan, thank you again for your efforts and all that you do, and along with the rest of your committee and, uh, and uh, coordinating it with the, the Department of Public Works, and Chris and uh, the administrator. And uh, again, it's, it's laudable. Uh, it's achievable, you know, we can do better and we should do better. And, um, but I think this uh, recycling of textiles is, is critical and I think we should be embracing that too. Just, just a point of information. Um, the recycling committee is very aware of Bay State and similar programs for textile recycling. Um, just for your information, I don't think people know this, uh, the Goodwill van that's parked in the parking lot uh, at Home Goods in Reading, accepts textiles for recycling. There are, there are sources of, or, 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 or vendors who will take this stuff. So at this point, from the committee's point of view, we have a much higher uh, priority for plastics and similar materials in the recycling stream. We, we, we do have our eye on, on textiles. We also have our eye on organics. Um, there are plenty of vendors out there that, and I think um, one of them is, um, I think it's called Black Earth, um, is our advertising in North Reading for residential uh, participation. Well, I know, I mean, we've actually participated in putting some of our textiles in outside the schools in, in Reading because they have the bins right outside you know, the yeah. elementary school down at Child Street. Um, but again, it's an easy program to implement, you know, a uh, ready-made audience here. And, and again, a, a willing audience in relation to, if you tie it with the, uh, the PTOs, um, it helps, you know, them raise some funds in order to sustain some enrichment programs within the school department. So it's a win-win. Uh, so to me, it's a, that's, a, that's low hanging fruit that maybe we should be taking a look at too. Well, the, right now the market isn't there. Yeah, I think COVID comes into that, doesn't it? Right now? No, they're actually taking it. They're actually taking. Are it. you taking it now? Okay. No, no there, it, it, there, it, there it, are it, places will take it. I'm just saying that it, it's, it's, it's very difficult to do, do it on an economically efficient basis because the pricing is so low. Right, but the risk is is being assumed by. Outfits such as Bay State Textile, and they're still participating in school, encouraging people to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so drawing it back to this policy, and I think that the educational outreach that you know, I think um, the purpose of the implementation, as Mr. Greenberg said, was to avail ourselves of the grant funding that can um, we can from which we can produce, uh, you know, informational. Um, I guess, informational brochures and notifications to the public with regard to what's acceptable and what isn't. And some of it's sort of counterintuitive, but we did, we have had presentations during our meetings previously, but it would help to sort of get that, you know, get a, a far, um, uh, get a, um, get some more outreach on that so that people understand, you know, when you throw your 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 bread your plastic bread basket in with all your recycled cardboard, it's going to gum up the works, and the whole thing is not even going to be recyclable, and things like that. So um, that's sort of minimizing it. It's a lot more information than that that has to be that has to be publicized so people understand the right way to recycle their trash. What is what is going to be accepted? waste acceptable recyclable waste and what isn't and i do know that they're they're going through all their contracts and we did hear presentation previously because they're they're not accepting they're not accepting recyclable waste anymore so it's increasing the cost of the waste haulers and so they want they're getting much more particular about what they'll take and what they won't take so we don't really want to incur additional more cost associated with the trash pickup than what we're already anticipating because of the recycling issue. So all of this is going to help with that with regard to 
get in get in the information to the public and and so we really applaud your efforts and thank you and keep keep up keep up with it for us okay thank you um, thank do, you and does anyone else have any any other other members have any questions or comments or all right anything else mr greenberg no, that about covers it. Thank you. I just want to get something that people can put on their refrigerators at home and every right. Monday night or Tuesday morning, remind themselves of how to do it right. That's all I Perfect. want. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Deming, Mr. Deming's with us too. So, um, but he, he didn't raise his hand. So I don't know. We're, we're at a first reading. So we'll welcome any input that um, you have for it as we move it forward and maybe expand it like Mr. O'Leary wants us to, where there's recommendations in it, we could probably add these other areas where, people, where we can repurpose or be, you know, be more um, conscious of these, uh, these other ways that we can recycle or repurpose items. All right, there's Mr. Deming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's he's been attending a, a few meetings with us this week. Anything else you want to add, Mr. Deming? Uh, no, I think uh, there's two other parts of um, you know Dan can talk about probably at a later time. But two other parts that go along with getting these grants that I'm working on. One of them, the state just kind of revamped it. It has to do with the reporting. There's an annual survey that goes to Mass DEP, and another aspect. Um, that we're working on. So we're, we're trying to get all three of these aspects together so we can get the, the grants needed to help us with education. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for your work on this. Welcome. All right. So we'll take a look at that. We'll have it at our next meeting, Mr. Gilberto. We'll sure. have a second reading, revision, as as we like to do is help add add more into it make your nice one pager into maybe three pages all right let's move this along and let me, let me just get back to the agenda thank you for uh the information on that thank you all take it easy our next uh, order of business is to review the status of the senior tax rebate work off program votes may be taken and Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, due to the pandemic, the senior rebate program was required to be suspended in March. Um, we've been trying to determine what path forward we might have, what equitable path forward we might have to be able to accommodate the participants, which for this current year, which would be ending at the end of September, was 50 residents participating. But as you know, space is at, has been at a bit of a premium in all of our buildings. So the ability to accommodate folks in the traditional fashion just has not been there. Um, Karen and I, Karen is the coordinator of the, of the program, and we've been begun discussions about how we might be able to, to make something work in a way that is accessible to as many people as possible, but we don't have a definitive plan at this point in time to be truthful with everybody. That said, we do have participants who have worked hours in the program as it began in October of last year, um, and we're not able to complete the program. So we've consulted with town council, consulted with the assessor, the treasurer, and the finance director. And our, um, our recommendation to the board is that the board for this plan, for this program year only, which is ending the end of this September and was effectively suspended in March, that we increase the hourly rate for work in the program to the maximum under the state law of minimum wage, $12.75 per hour. So that those who participated in the program would get as large a benefit as possible um, within the statutory cap of $750 as approved by town meeting per year. And as you know, we've, um, we, we, we increased that amount, I think a year and a half ago at this point for a hundred hours of work. Um, and we're recommending that that rate be increased to the maximum so that folks can take advantage of it. Um, we had some who did a, quite a bit of work in the short period of time that the program was up and running. Some who were approaching, I think 80 hours. Um, so um, they were not able to finish. But our, our thinking is that we were trying to recognize what might be an important benefit for some people right now um, who are enrolled in the program 
um, and are asking the board to uh, to agree uh, where the board sets the uh, the hourly rate. And I'd be happy to answer any questions, but the, the short answer is that we do believe that we, uh, um, you know, we can afford this and we've identified funding within the, the context of the fiscal year to do so. Okay, Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, I'm just reading it and um, I don't see where it says this year only. Is that? Let me just scroll through um, just to take a second look at it. Page 119. Thank you. So it should say $12.75 for program year 2019 2020 only. Oh. Do you have that? Oh, see, that's, that's Article 23. I don't see that. Am I, not, am I just missing it? It's in the motion, too. Sure. So I apologize. It's, it's actually only in the motion. That's only why. In the on page oh. 13 of the, I, I apologize. Okay. I think uh, in the packet, we provided you the previous votes of town meeting on this. If I recall, I'm just scrolling through um, just to show you what was approved when we made the change. The yeah. motion in the earlier part of the packet makes the recommended, uh, takes oh. the recommended action. It's on, I think, page six I saw it on. 13. All right. 13. That's an old. That was an old article where they increased yeah. it from 500 to 750. I think, right? Correct. Gilberto, that correct. was just previously. What was approved at town meeting was to increase the amount of the the rebate. Correct. All right. So, any other? Other? say that we we did inquire if by statute we could simply grant the maximum to everybody, um, and uh, our town council consulted with the Department of Revenue, and they indicated that because it's for hours worked, we're just not able to do that. So we we found another approach to try to maximize the benefit for the participants in the program, and would appreciate your support. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Do we have a motion, Mr. Studo? Yes, we do. Madam Chair, I move to increase the hourly rate for the Senior Tax Work-Off Program to $12.75 for program year 2019-2020 and, and to maintain the maximum benefit of $750 authorized by town meeting. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Thank you for working on that, Mr. Gilberto. It's important. I think that we will you were able to be resourceful with this this one too. All right. Next order of business is the legal bills, right? Yeah. Yep. Mr. Studo. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for July 2020 in the amount of $14,312.24, general uh, $5,225.24, labor $8,716.50, and 20 elm $370.50 for, again, total of $14,312.24. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. Next order of business is the town administrator's report. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> And uh, I see why Mr. Deming is hanging around because I have something that relates to his department in my town administrator's report that he's eagerly awaiting an answer for me on. Um, so the Department of Public Works was presented with an opportunity to purchase a used F-250 pickup truck previously owned by the NEMLEC police organization, which the North Reading Police Department is a participant in. Um, one of our police officers uh, is also the fleet manager for NEMLEC, and so there is quite a bit of insight on the vehicle's history. The truck is a 2015 with only 15,600 miles. 
Never plowed snow nor been driven in the winter or exposed to road salt. Um, the truck being purchased would help accomplish the DPW's goal of replacing vehicles which are obsolete during plowing operations with vehicles that can plow. And in this case, we would be trading a 2014 Ford Transit two-wheeled van, two-wheel drive van with 55,000 miles, which cannot plow, and a 2007 Ford Ranger with 101,000 miles, which cannot plow, uh, listed as surplus, along with two undercover police vehicles that the police department deemed unusable. The remaining funds for the purchase are available in the water enterprise and the truck uh, would primarily be used by water department staff, um, although it would also participate in snow and ice removal. So normally, as you know, we go through the capital planning process for the acquisition of um, a vehicle. Um, and for um, through that process, there's usually discussion with the capital committee for the disposal of any surplus vehicles. Finance director did have some conversations regarding that, but the final sort of um, step in the process was that I would inform the select board that we would be taking this step and again, since Mr. Deming took over his role first as uh, acting general foreman and then as operations manager, we've really worked to consolidate the fleet to the extent possible and really made a concerted effort to um, get rid of surplus equipment that really was not being used and to put that to value towards equipment that we feel we can need. This will avoid us needing to purchase uh, what would be a probably a forty-five dollars to $50,000 new vehicle um, uh, in, a, in an upcoming capital plan. Um, so I, I just, I wanna recognize the police department, particularly um, Lieutenant Romeo and um, the acting DPW director for highlighting this as an option available to us. Um, secondly, I, include I included tentative information for fall 2020 influ influenza clinics. The health department through Mr. Bracey has con contacted CVS Mobile Health to drive to various municipal locations and offer um, uh, scheduled immunizations. This would be in addition to the storefront um, operations at each of their locations here in town at CVS's locations, as well as the locations at Walmart and Walgreens. Um, with all, their health department's also working to publicize to people. Um, anybody can go to these stores, as I think we all know, and you can pretty much go at any point in time, depending upon availability to receive your immunization. Um, however, the flu department, the, the, flu <laughs> the health department, not the flu department, is try to put a concerted effort on to make sure people try to get it as early as possible. And so um, they put something out last week for the schools. It filled up like that, um, a lot of interest and they're working to try to expand some capacity just to supplement the rest of the existing healthcare network here in town and, and in the region. And so I just, I wanna you know, recognize the health department for taking that concerted effort. Uh, the van will be here at town hall on October 2nd and 9th to offer what I think I saw were 30 appointments for immunizations, uh, largely for employees. So another great thing for our workforce. And so I, I, I just, I wanna recognize the, you know, Bob, Bob Bracey and the health department for trying to just nail every resource down that they can to try to get people immunized. Um, and uh, that concludes my report for this evening. Questions from the town administrator. None. All right. We're on to old and new business. Uh, Mr. Walner. Um, I guess I'm just wondering, did that letter ever get out that U.S. the, the post office letter to the. Yeah, it's in the correspondence uh, section that was in our packet tonight. Oh, I missed it. OK, thank you. I'm glad I got out the door. Never needed more than now. And the census, the census, um, and also, yeah. both of those were able to get. Uh, they both went out on, um, they both went out Friday and all of the offices responded acknowledging receipt. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Studo. All set, Mr. Oh, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, actually, I was just going to, uh, compliment the chair for her efforts to uh, get those letters done. Uh, letters to our congressional delegation, expressing our concerns regarding the recent attempts by some federal government leaders to limit voting options and dismantle critical infrastructure within the Postal Service. And the letter uh, expressing our concerns of the U.S. Census Bureau to shortening the collection of, the, of data. So uh, thank you very much. And the letters read well and expressed our concerns appropriately. And I'm glad to hear that the uh, congressional delegations have uh, acknowledged the receipt of it. Um, and again, I want to thank the board members for uh, taking the action. I think it's important. 
And the only other uh, matter I have on the roll of the new business is that I wish to um, wish Mr. and Mrs. Studo a smooth and speedy delivery, hopefully before town meeting, so he can make some motions at town meeting. Okay. <laughs> Best of luck to Mrs. Studo, and I hope you hold up pretty well, too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, well. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, all right. First, I have to. I can't take credit for Mr. Walner's letter. I just, just, just did a little editing. And second of all, Mr. Studo, if that kid comes along and you show up at the town meeting, you're going to have bigger issues than just taking <laughs> care of an issue. <laughs> I'm, right. uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think I got there. Um, I think I have a justifiable uh, reason. <laughs> yes. Um, and, it, and, you know, it's not just trying to avoid, you know, no. town meeting. Yes. Yeah, so, but uh, no, I, I, I appreciate it. Well, that's gonna, an excused absence. I'm on a limb and say you don't have an option. You're, you're, yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah, no, not, no, no. I, um, I will, I will take, no matter how important the articles would be, if this was even a full town meeting, I would take the wrath of the entire citizenry of North Reading over my wife's. Well, enjoy. Hopefully you'll have, you'll be sharing some wonderful news with us and enjoy, enjoy that. I will know, I will know soon. I am, I'm here. I'm yeah. waiting for the call. Enjoy that time. And uh, Mr. Waller, were you all set? I'm all set. Thank you. And Mrs. Gonzalez. All set. Thank you. And I'm all set too. And do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Manny Pelly is aye. All right. Thank you, folks. Good night. Talk to you soon. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, Dave.